<laughs> oh, okay, I'm terrible. That is what not the that right is button. not that what that is not even the game. Hey, look at that! So we wow. got uh, we got uh, a game two for you guys. The scoreboard I love technology the scoreboard is pretty accurate, Mr. Doa. Yep, it's uh, <laughs> sure is. Wow, I'm just gonna go home. So XSplit, if you don't know, it's a really difficult program to use. <laughs> Shut up for humans. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have game number two coming up here on Antigua Shipyard. We have Caronte Esports Club Vortex as the purple Zerg over here on the left side of the map. And over in the right side of the map, we have Startail Squirtle, who is the defending champion on IPL Fight Club. Last week, he took out Slayer's Coca, 5-3. to three. Mm -hmm. Coca, if you don't know, beat Marine King Prime to be the, the champion last week. So Squirtle is starting what could be a very long run. Who knows? The longest run we've ever had on Fight Club is actually only three wins. And we've had MC, Jock G, Teja, Creator, Marine King. Like, none of those guys got more we than three wins. We have had literally, like, the best of the best. I yeah. mean, we have, we've had nearly everybody out there that's, you know, won a GSL almost. We, have, I don't, we haven't had an ST or MVP yet. We have not we'll have had an MVP. Bit, so but we've, we've had we've most of the people that have won GSLs. Them. We've invited Nesty and MVP multiple times, you know. Mm. Uh, MVP's got some medical problems from time to time that prohibit yeah. him from playing too much. He's And both of them just have GSL something to play in all yeah. the time. And now OSL as Not well. Anymore. Like MVP just, I believe, got into the next round of OSL. Hmm. Uh, and Squirtle, Squirtle just played in the uh, GOM versus Kespa series where they play blind matches against yeah. people. And he didn't lose a game. Wow. <laughs> he's good, man. I mean, he's definitely one of the best Protoss out there in the world right now. Yeah. So easily people, people suggesting get MVP to come beat Squirtle. And it's like it's not that easy. I mean, we'd love to, but yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe if you're lucky. But him. I'll give him a call after work. And I'll yeah. be like, hey, <laughs> MVP, what, do you, what are you up to? Be like MVP, uh, we'll come play some Starcraft. Want to play a match? Let's All right. Do it. All right. So we got some stuff happening in this game. Uh, looks we like do. actually timings for both players are pretty similar to what they were last game, except no Forge yet. So Nexus before Forge. Nope. For Squirtle. Yeah, he usually does go Nexus first, and most of his PVZs that I've seen anyway goes for that 15 Nexus, and then uh, at 17 puts down his Forge. There it is, and we'll probably see a Gateway going down fairly soon as well. It's pretty opening, for, pretty normal opening. Which, when you combine those words, becomes the words an opening. Normaning. Pretty opening, <laughs> opening from uh, Vortex right now. Getting his pool, getting his spawning or hatchery as well. Wow, I've like completely lost the ability Focus. to speak English. And we're probably going to see energy. another hatchery as well. I had a I had a different sort of energy drink. What'd you have? I can't say. Was it disgusting? Uh, it was not you can't so say great you can't on taste. It? <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I Red can't read. Bull. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> I can't read. That amused me too much. All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's but the bottom line is that there's not there's not a lot going on at this point in the game. I mean, we've got standard openings for both of these guys. There's a third hatchery, shockingly going mm -hmm. down for a Zerg player in a Zerg versus Protoss matchup. Um, you know, we can actually talk about that a little bit too. We're going to see the Cyber Core. There it is. And uh, you know, Protoss, I feel like have more options these days than Zergs do. We've even seen Protoss players like uh, Naniwa and uh, Oz on Fnatic going back to a gateway expands even versus Zerg lately. So Protoss have a lot of options, not only in their openings, but also in the early game and uh, to a certain extent in the late game as well. But Zerg's kind of are pigeonholed into this three hatch, no gas opening. Basically no other Zerg does anything different. If they do, it's like this big shock right now. So I, I'm curious to see when Zerg players are going to kind of start innovating a little bit more. I mean, you can open on uh, two bases. The reason why Zergs don't like to do that is because if the Protoss goes Nexus first, you're probably going to be a little bit economically behind, which you never want to be as a Zerg player. But I feel like there are some two base options out there that Zergs, you know, maybe haven't found yet or maybe haven't polished enough yet to uh, to make work. But we'll see. I mean, it's it seems like this three hatch no gas is getting too predictable. Not in that Protoss can punish that outright, but punish, you know, what the Zerg players yeah. can easily transition into out of it. That's true. But, you know, I feel like the flip side to making it a faster build or a two base build is mm -hmm. that you're sort of pressured to go all not all in but like pedal to the metal aggressive you need to yeah. you need to send in a lot of lings um, early to, to be able to sustain and stay you know even economically like you said against Nexus first you have to do damage and yeah. in in a scenario where you're playing Squirtle who's got incredible micro and probably is going to be able to respond to ling pressure pretty pretty well um, no matter what 
uh, it's it's just tough because it feels like more of a coin flip when you're sending in a bunch of lings and you don't know whether it's going to be successful. Whereas you can just make these three bases and at least know that you're going to be alive in five minutes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the kind of thing is that you're going to be like, all right, I'm just going to do this and then be ready to hopefully defend here. And how much with this Overlord C? Anything. Will he see the he Robo? Will. He'll see the Forge moving at least, I think. We'll dun, see. Dun, oh, dun, Sentry's dun, joining dun, in. There's the Forge. He does see the Forge already? moving. Yeah. And, oh, oh he saw I a don't know. Thing. He saw a swirly animation. He did. He saw the Chrono Boost. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he saw that. But, um, no, he actually, he saw the Chrono Boost, but that was about it. That's so I don't know how much he actually it. saw. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you could see the Chrono Boost and not the actual you building. You can actually, yeah. On. For it's some crazy. reason, the Chrono Boost graphic appears sooner it's than fat. the actual building. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to bend that way. He tries oh, to no. scout in from this side. Oh, Good. and he saw the robo at that one. So. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, at least he, he knows got that now. information. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's going to be a 1-1 uh, one, one push, it looks like. We've got three more gateways on the way. There they are. And we do have 44 probes. So we'll see how aggressive he wants to be with it. He's just pumping out Immortals right now. 1-1 um, one, one is extremely uh, powerful for Protoss, obviously, in this he's, case. He's got a bunch, a bunch of gateways coming down, just now flipping over. Um, he yep. just added a bunch more. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so this is going to be pretty all-in. It looks like 3 plus 6, yeah, up to 7 gate, 1-1. One, one with the Immortals. So really, really powering units out really uh, rapidly here. And uh, to the extent that he's not really making any more probes, obviously, it's, right. it's going to be tough to expand in this case. Um, talking a lot to uh, Axlav on Infinity 7, oh. a very good Protoss player. Ooh, and I like this. I'll talk about that in just a second. But Axlav right now, I mean, just the builds that Protoss are doing, uh, you really just kind of need to watch the drone count. and right. uh, the, Not the drone count, the probe count. That's going to yeah, tell yeah. you more than anything, in his opinion, if the Protoss is planning on expanding. But let's talk a little bit about Wart what Vortex is doing, man. He's getting drops. He's getting Ventral Sax upgrade, which yeah. I personally hate. Why? Because dropping onto sentries is not good. Dropping onto Blink Stalkers is not good. Dropping onto a seven-gate Protoss in his base is going to be really, really difficult. Yeah. So I just I don't I don't think it has very many favorable situations anymore. Well, surprisingly enough, it can work. I mean, it depends on how the drop ends up going. It, it really is on the Zerg a lot to make sure that he's doing it. He's got to be focused in the right too, situation. Because if you yeah, just spam right units position. and they and they attack all over the place, then you're not you're not doing cons, you know concentrated damage. I've seen yeah. I've seen Stefano even just you know spam a bunch of roaches into a base and then just let them attack. You know, whatever. as it is, this looks like it could be. Oh wow, where are the other units for Vortex? Oops, losing a big group of them right there. That's unfortunate. Drops does not finish, so he's not able to use those overloads too. to rescue them. This is going to be brutal with this Warp Prism here with seven gates yeah. supporting it. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for our uh, Caronte Zerg player here. It looks like, especially now that Squirtle has that high ground, he can force field this ramp all day. He can actually force field both ramps. All I hope day. Vortex <laughs> wasn't too attached to this hatchery. No, it doesn't uh, look like it. Oh, man, this is Or that Overlord. Oh, the Overlord! So, will Ventral oh, Sacks help? <laughs> Yeah. I uh, hope he wasn't attached to these drones either. <laughs> Poor guys are Oh, here we go. Drops will come in handy here. Not a this huge amount of stalkers. Scares me. Drones coming in right now, dropping right on top of those sentries. Does he have enough units to really make this work, though? He needs to leave those overlords on top, and he does. That will draw some fire from the stalkers, but will it no be way. enough? He is so thinned out already. Yeah. And even even had Doesn't he survived this attack, he'd be so far behind. Like GG.